Hi there, today I'm going to update my miter saw station with dust collection. I made a dust hood with sliding adjustable doors which makes it easy to open for mitered cuts. I'll also show you how to set up a dust cyclone on an automated switch. I built this miter saw station back in March and I have a separate video for that build if you want to check that out. I also have plans available that include the stop blocks and the extension wing. For now I've just been using my little shop vac that I connect to the dust port on my miter saw. At first I thought the dust collection on my miter saw was pretty good, but as you can see there's dust flying all over not being collected by the dust port. To be honest, I think that's partially because my shop vac filter is pretty clogged, and as a result the suction is being affected. But in any case, the outcome is that dust is flying everywhere. Not only is it messy, but as you can imagine, not very good for the lungs. I have this air particle monitor that I use, and here I'm showing a reading I took when I first walked into the shop without running any tools. So this is my baseline. Now I want to show you readings when I run the saw using my regular shop vac setup. After only a few cuts, the particles skyrocket to seriously unhealthy levels. And this is why I always wear my respirator in the shop. While I clean the air with my air filter, let's get started on the dust cyclone. Alright, so I've got all the parts I'll need to build this dust collection system, starting with the dust deputy here that I got that comes with uh, this gasket and all the nuts and bolts. You'll also need a bucket, um, unless you buy it as a kit, but I use the smaller bucket. Um, you'll see that a big bucket doesn't fit under my miter saw station, so I'm using this smaller two gallon bucket with a lid. I'm also going to use this IVAC system, which basically will turn on my shop vac when the miter saw turns on, and I'll show you how that works too. All right, and over here you have a standard shop vac. I'm using a rigid portable shop vac, and you'll also need some extra hosing uh, to connect to the dust deputy. And in my case, I need a special adapter for my miter saw, so you might need to find an adapter that'll fit to your system. You'll find links to all the tools and materials that I used in the video's description below. The first step is to trace and cut out the hole for the cyclone to fit onto the lid. I used tape to hold the foam gasket in place, but don't do this. When I removed the tape, it ripped off part of the gasket. I decided to use a dust cyclone for two reasons. First, it'll significantly improve the suction on my shop vac, which means I'll have less airborne sawdust, and second, it'll keep the filter from clogging up all the time, which means I won't have to clean the filter so often. Instead, I'll simply empty the orange bucket. After cutting out the inner circle with a utility knife, here I'm drilling the holes for the bolts. It helps to place a backer board underneath while drilling the holes. After lining up the gasket with the holes, I'll position the cyclone and use the provided washers and bolts to attach the cyclone to the lid. Here I'm tightening from underneath, but I don't want to over tighten and bend or break the lid, just enough to get a good seal. I took the time to empty out my shop vac and clean the filter. Now since I typically always swing my miter saw left when making miter cuts, I decided to place the hose on the right so it wouldn't get in the way. For some reason I thought I could freehand the hole using this 3 inch Forstner bit I have. A hole saw would have been best, but I don't have one big enough, so I improvised. Obviously that was wrong. The bit just kept jumping around on me. So I made a template that I screwed down to guide the bit, and that worked perfectly. Okay, so this is the extra hose I bought, which is also a rigid shop back hose. I'll first connect the Bosch 35mm adapter to the miter saw, and the hose will connect to that. I made the hole on the workbench big enough so that the hose could move freely when it needs to. Okay, next I'm going to hook up the cyclone, but I'm warning you that I made a mistake that I only realized after the project was done. I hooked up the hoses backwards, so bear with me please. Here I'm hooking up the hoses to the cyclone. The correct way, not shown here, is to connect the shop vac to the top of the cyclone, and then connect the other hose that goes to the saw to the side. As I mentioned, even this small bucket is a tight fit under the workbench, but once it's in, it fits just right. I'm going to use this IVAC switch to automate the shop vac so it turns on and off by itself. Just connect the saw and the vac to the indicated receptacles, and make sure to set the switch to auto. Now the shop vac will automatically turn on when the saw is activated, and will stay on for 6 seconds after the saw stops to clear the hose. Surprisingly, even though I did it wrong, the cyclone actually works pretty well. You can see the dust cycling around in there. After a bunch of cuts, I even opened up the bucket to check how well it was working, and was happy to see all the sawdust in the bucket. Imagine how well it'll work when I actually hook it up right? 
At this point I did another dust test and as you'll see the particle monitor lit up again, although less so than before. To improve dust control further, I'm going to build a dust hood behind the miter saw to trap as much dust as possible. By no means will this improve the cyclone suction, but I'm hoping that by containing the dust it'll improve dust control overall. I'm using quarter inch plywood and basically just measuring and cutting one piece at a time like a puzzle until I have a box built around the back of the saw. I'm building the box so that it'll reach just up to the back of the fence so I can attach the sliding doors. We'll get to that next. With the box built, I'm now going to add some rails for the sliding doors. For this, I'll use a simple 1x2. I need to cut out two slots to make room for the knobs at the back of the fence, and I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. I position the rail flush up against the back of my fence. Here's what I meant about those knobs being in the way. As you can see, the rail is being supported by my workbench on each side and on the saw's base in the middle. The only issue I'm noticing is that the blade will hit the rail, so I'm going to mark that and make a little cutout. Here I've set the rail on an angle and clamped it down so I can use a Forstner bit to make an angled cutout. Now I can just pop it back into place and check to see the fit. All good. The next minor issue that I noticed is that the knobs reach right up to the top of the rail. I want to make a groove where the doors will slide, so this is a problem. An easy fix is to add another piece of wood to build it up. I simply transferred the cutout onto my second piece, and again used my table saw and miter gauge to cut out the groove. Here I'm gluing the pieces together with a few brad nails to hold it in place while the glue dries. I didn't think to do this at the time, but make sure to put the nails in the back half since you'll be cutting a groove in the front half. Okay, with those minor adjustments made, I now want to mark out where I need to cut the groove so that the doors will slide up right against the box. I set my table saw blade just peeking out of the table and made a shallow groove in two passes just wide enough to loosely fit some 1 8 plywood I'll be using for the doors. Then I'll just add some glue and a few nails to hold it in place. I made another rail for the top and cut out the same groove then attached it making sure that the groove lined up with the front edge of the box so the doors could still slide in. Here I'm cutting the doors using 1 8 plywood. I did a few tests and adjusted until I felt that they slid nice and smoothly. I want to be able to close the doors as much as possible, so I'm going to make a few cutouts for the handle and the motor. I'm just eyeballing it here, but you could make a cardboard template first and then use that to cut out your doors. At first I used a jigsaw, but I found that it really left a jagged edge on the thin plywood, so I switched to a utility knife. After several passes, I could just snap off the edge, and that worked much better. So after making a few different cuts and tests until the saw moved freely in the 90 degree position, it was time for another air quality test to see if the dust hood makes a difference. After a few cuts, the particle monitor lights up again, but much less than in the previous tests. This is a time lapse of 3 minutes after making those cuts, and as you can see, the air quality drops back down to normal pretty fast. Again, my goal with this setup isn't to have perfect dust collection, but really to improve upon my current setup, and I'm pretty happy with the results so far. As you can see here, the dust goes into the box, and whatever isn't collected by the cyclone seems to stay in the box, which ultimately means I'll have a cleaner shop. Hey, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon.